This lesson is on the echinoderms, known as the spiny skinned animals, the sea star, the brittle star, the sea urchin, the sand dollar, and the sea cucumber, but we're not drawing that today. These are animals that are found on the bottom of the ocean, whether in shallow areas or to deeper areas. We're gonna start off with a simple one, the sea urchin. So I'm gonna use my small brush and using my Reeves color palette, we're gonna do a sea urchin that is very common on coral reefs. It's rather black and purple. It's known as the long spined urchin. I'm going to start with the center body. A lot of the um, uh, Asian um, restaurants and places serve sea urchin as a delicacy. They eat um, out of what's in the center. Now all of these spines, you just take your brush and very quickly, I'm using the black with just a tad of dark blue in it. And I'm just making these long spines coming out from the center. This is very simple to do if you do any coral reef paintings. This is an easy way to paint your sea urchin. Sea urchins do come a few different colors. Some of them have shorter spines, some of them have thicker spines. There's roughly about 950 different species of sea urchin. They're found on coral reefs, they're found in uh, deeper parts of the ocean. They eat algae for the most part, so they are herbivores and they crawl over rocks and eat the algae off of the rocks. So again, I'm just going from the center and going out. They're pretty stationary, although they do crawl around um, to get more algae off of the rocks, but they don't move a whole lot. Now I'm just taking my brush and blending it a little bit to show a little more darkness there in the center. I'm putting in a few more strokes. Just try to make all your spines straight. So there we have our sea urchin, the first one of our echinoderms. Echino meaning spiny, derm meaning skin, spiny skin. Now we're gonna do the brittle star. You can see this, you know, it's a little fuzzy here. Uh, the brittle star, there we go. Um, some people think of it like a starfish, but it actually moves with its legs instead of with the tube feet, which a starfish does. So in order to make the brittle star, we're gonna make a little circle. That's gonna be its body. So just go round and round. And then we're gonna just kind of wavy, put five legs on it. Just let your pencil go because they move these legs around. That's how they move. Little dot in the center. And as with all of the echinoderms, they kind of have a star shape. And we're gonna be putting that in in the very center. So that's all the drawing we're going to do. Now I'm getting my small brush and I'm going to use green. They come in all different colors, green and yellow, purple, blue, some red, but I'm going to use green. I'm filling in the center. Now I'm just going to follow those lines I made with my pencil. And again, they move these legs all over because that's how they move. And I'm curling that one. Just make sure your five legs are all evenly spaced. Again, this is not a starfish. This is called a brittle star. And it too is a spiny skinned animal. They can be in shallow areas all the way as deep as 200 meters. There's about 2,000 species of them. And they're generally quite shy. If they, you come upon one, like in a coral reef area, they'll usually scurry under the rocks. Again, because they're the spiny skinned animals, I'm putting all these spines all over the legs. So with little short strokes, using just the tip of your brush, and I'm using the same green that I did the body and the arms with, just put all of these little spines all up and down all the legs. So just little short strokes all over. Sometimes they aggregate and there's hundreds of hundreds of them together. That's more in um, deeper areas. Again, there's about 2,000 different species of these. They can be little, they can get a lot larger. More like the starfish as far as size goes. More of these spines. There we go. Just little strokes 
all around, spiny skinned animals. I'm almost done here, just the last leg. Then we're gonna work on the center disc. A few more spines. More spines here, there we go. Now, getting to the center disc, I'm gonna get a little darker color and I'm gonna put in the center and then make the star pattern that goes out to where each leg is. So that's the star design on the brittle star. And I'm just gonna make it a little, look a little more like a flower, which I showed you when I showed you the sample of a brittle star before I started the drawing. Outline the body. I'm just, now I'm gonna just put in a few of these lines on the legs. Some of the brittle stars have these bands in them. Gives a little more interest to what it all looks like. So you're just using the tip of your brush. Make some of these horizontal lines in a darker color. You can also do a two-tone if you're doing a yellow Brittle star, you can do the bands in orange. It makes them look real pretty. There we go, and I'm just gonna outline it a little more. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just write it here. That is the brittle star, another member of the echinoderms closely related to the starfish. Moves with his arms. Oh, a sand dollar. Okay, again, you see that flower pattern. The bottom's flat, and it has these holes in it. This is the one we're going to do. There's about 11 different species of sand dollar. They're usually in shallow areas. Now, the sand dollar that I showed you is a dead one. Dead ones are white, and that's what everyone thinks of with a sand dollar, that they're white. But when they're alive, they're either a brown, a purple, or can be a green. And that's what we're gonna do. So I made a circle and I'm just kind of making a rough outline, a dot in the center. And I'm gonna make my five arms, try to make them evenly spaced, just coming out. And like a flower, you know, just kind of like loop it around that line that you made. They actually use these um, to help with their breathing. And you'll find that star pattern on um, in some way in all of the echinoderms. And then I'm making these circles. This also has to do with their breathing. Different sand dollars have different sizes and maybe in a different location. But I'm copying the one that I have, the real sand dollar that I'm looking at. I just erased some of those other lines. Notice the outside is not perfectly circle. It was kind of an uneven um, kind of a circle, kind of free form. And I'm being very aware of where those circles go. Just cleaning it up with a little erasing. And again, these are white when they're dead. So when we find them, they're dead. But I'm gonna use this um, uh, ochre mustard color for it. It's when they're alive and they're a little bit fuzzy. So they actually do have spines. They're a little fuzzy, so I'm just gonna blend in this rust color. I'm gonna be very careful I don't fill in those circles because those are the holes in the disc. Just gonna go around them so I know where they are and when I color it in, I'm not going to fill them in. So using, again, I'm using my number four round brush, getting a little more water, getting that ochre color filling it all in. There's another member um, very similar to the sand dollar called the sea biscuit. It looks like a sand dollar, but it's fatter. And they live in the sand. They burrow into the sand. There's usually a lot of them together. But when we find them, they're the ones that are dead. They eat different detrius um, components that are in the sand. And they usually burrow in on their side found in shallow waters. Now I'm just outlining, changing the variation in color a little bit, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. 
going on the outside here. Getting a little more of my ochre here on my brush. Now the outside has all more of the little, I added a little brown to it. Um, more spines on the outside that you can see. Actually, there's spines all over the surface of the sand dollar, but it just feels fuzzy when you touch it. You really can't see them. But I'm putting them all on the outside. And these um, are not evident when the sand dollar is dead. They've all fallen off. So I'm going all around with these short little strokes, kind of like what I did on the outside of the brittle star. And now I'm looking at my flower in the center and I'm making little short little dots to outline those what look like flower petals. This is with the brown. There we go. Get a little more brown and just little dots outlining the flower. And a few dots to show the interior, what looks like the petals. There we are. And I'm just gonna put a little darkness around each one of these holes that are in the sand dollar. There we go. Fixing it up a little bit. And a little bit here on the edge. Just to show a little bit of definition on the outside. And we have another member of the echinoderms, our sand dollar. my paper down, give me a little more room here. Still using my small brush. I'm using some pink and I'm making a crinoid. This is a feather star. Feather stars, again, members of the echinoderms. But these are one of the only ones that actually swim. They pulsate in the water column. They're absolutely beautiful. They have a base. They'll settle on the rocks. They can be found down to 200 meters, but often in shallower areas. And they too have all of those little spines off of their arms. They come in different colors, orange, yellow, red, blue. They're really beautiful when you see them swimming. And yet when they're settled on the rocks, you think they're some kind of a plant or a flower. But they're a member of a group called crinoids, again, part of the echinoderms, the spiny skin animals. But it is known as a feather star. And I'm using the tip of my brush just like I did on the outside of the sand dollar, the outside of the brittle star, all these little spines. And they filter feed with these. All these little tiny spines. This, see, these are such simple animals to draw and paint. Um, I'm sure you'll have a lot of success with them. And if you're ever doing a coral reef painting or undersea painting, they really can add a lot in color and movement to your picture. All these little tiny spines. There we go, that side. Okay. 
Okay, almost done. Let's see, just a little tedious. The um, number of arms are usually in groups of five, so I have ten on this one. So there we have it, another member of the spiny skinned animals, a crinoid. is called the Feather Star. And this is the only one that really swims. Now we're looking to, um, to do one more. And this one is called the Sea Lily. It looks like a flower. Again, different colors. Sometimes it's just a white or an off-white, an orange, a yellow. I'm making it here in orange with just a little bit of red with it. It attaches itself to rocks and it has all the spines coming off each arm. It is again, it's a crinoid just like the feather star, but this one is called the sea lily. More of these Shaggy almost looks like I'm doing a palm tree, but this is an animal Animals of course those Creatures which cannot produce their own food. They need an outside food source For years they thought that these the feather star and the sea lily were plants But upon more research found out they are in fact animals spiny skinned animals from the center, they kind of have that star shape. Just putting on all of these spines, filter feeding from the water. There we go. And it has this stalk, which attaches itself to the rocks with a, some kind of a hold fast. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my white acrylic get a little bit on my tiny brush and I'm just going to put a few dots on the sea lily just every so often maybe you can't see them too good if you do a darker color they'd be a little more obvious but I'm just putting dots on what would be the equivalent of branches but it's their arms so I'm putting these white dots on the arms there we go just every so often. We have to use the acrylic. The white um, watercolor does not show up at all. So I use the acrylic because it's opaque. And this is another crinoid. But a member of the echinoderm spiny skin and it is the sea lily. Now we have one last one that I'm going to do that you all know, the starfish. Starfish have many different colors, different sizes, found at just about all depths. We're just going to put our five arms, and I'm putting this so it looks a little more like it's laying down. I'm going to make a blue starfish. There is a really a blue starfish. I like to put them in my coral reef paintings because of its beautiful color. Just take your brush and you can push down a little bit and make the arms. Make it a little thicker in the center because that is the main body of the starfish. They are technically called sea stars because they're not really a fish. And their arms are all equal. They do not walk with their arms though. They walk with something underneath called tube feet. And they do have spines all over them. So I'm using the white just to make dots over the body just to represent some of the spines. The mouth of all of these animals is on the under part. A little bit too much there. There we go. And that just shows some of the spines that would be on the surface of the sea star. Some of the starfish have five arms, some have up to 24 like the sunflower. So here we have the sea star.
another member of the spiny-skinned animals, the echinoderms. And echino from Greek meaning spiny and derm meaning skin. The echinoderms. Benthos, they live on the bottom, found on coral reefs throughout oceans everywhere. Hope you enjoyed it.